Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad with your word for the day. I love our walking through the book of James because James is practical and truthful even when it hurts. Uh, listen to what he writes in chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. What causes and uh, quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity toward God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God? Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that our scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? Now, there's a lot that James covers in this passage. So let me just walk you through a couple of thoughts. First of all, James rebukes our, selfish, our selfishness and immaturity because we want and fight over stuff, right? You want to have it, you don't have it, so you get angry, you fight, you quarrel, you murder, you covet, you do all these things. And then he rebukes our lack of request. You do not have because you do not ask. Can I just tell you, uh, God is your father. He loves you. And it's never wrong for you to ask. Uh, you know, Jesus tells us, you know, who among you, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake. Or if he asks for bread, will give him a rock. And, and the answer is, duh, nobody will do that. So he's like, God is good. God wants to bless you. So go ahead and ask. And then James explains why God's going to tell you no. Okay, so you can ask. But he says, God's going to say no because we ask selfishly. We ask for things that we can spend on our pleasures for us. And that is so true, right? Think about the things we request the, the most, or maybe we don't say them out loud, but we want God to bless us financially. That's just worldly. Yeah, money makes things easier, but also makes things worse. We want physical health. Look, God's promised us a new body that's going to live forever, and we just want to live here longer away from him. Uh, you know, those are, those are worldly things, even though they might be good things, they're still worldly things. And so, you know, God says no, because you just want to spend it on you. And, and then, you know, our prayers are selfish and immature because we are caught up in the world. We want the things of this world more than we want Jesus. Um, you know, you can go to church every weekend. You can watch it online. You can watch Word for the Days. You can do all those kinds of things. But a lot of times we lament the things we don't have that the world offers because other people have them and we want them more than we want Jesus. I mean, that's just the truth. And I'm going to be like James and tell you the truth. And so we become in opposition to the kingdom of God because we want the stuff more than we want Jesus. And James calls us adulteresses because of it. He says, you are unfaithful partners with Jesus because of your desires. He, he probably uses a stronger word in the original language, but we're not going to go there. Uh, it grieves God because he loves us and he redeems us and he sacrificed Jesus to save us. He adopted us into his children, as his children and he wants an intimate relationship with you. Now, I know some of you don't have a close relationship with your adult children and you'd give anything if you did. And so you know a little bit how God feels about you because he wants that intimate relationship with you and he wants to bless you and he wants you to know him and enjoy him. But we're too busy being distracted by the world. Um, you see, when we indulge in those worldly desires, we're ignoring our Savior and our God. And that breaks his heart in the same way that your kids may break your heart. So um, I'm just going to encourage us to repent and to give ourselves only to Jesus because he's the one who leads us to life and blessing and hope. And by the way, if you find your delight in Jesus, he'll give you the desires of your heart, but they'll be different than what James is describing in chapter 4. So I hope that gives you a little bit of insight and I hope it gives you the courage to ask and I hope and pray that you have a blessed day.